be uh, in others. And you often see that where one town could have some localized flooding and another town doesn't have much of an issue at all. Notice that the line is uh, to the east of Orange. It's virtually right on through Nashua and Manchester. It's also then curves up right on east of Amherst. And also uh, thunderstorms are going through Springfield uh, right now. And of course, we understand, understandably, uh, folks very concerned in that area in view of what took place uh, just eight days ago. And this is certainly significant. It's not the same thing as that. But thunderstorms can be severe. They can cause some damage themselves. We've already had reports in scattered locations of some tree limbs and some trees down in the gusty winds, which have been 50, 60 miles an hour in some spots along the line. So that's what's happening with the storm. And of course, we're going to continue to follow this as it makes its way to the east with time across the region. Uh, Mike, do you have uh, something to add? Or, yes, um, Harvey. Uh, yes. You know, we want to update the severe thunderstorm warning, which is out, of course, for northern Worcester County, for Essex County, Suffolk County, uh, Middlesex County. That is until 5.30 tonight. So they've actually extended for an hour, mainly because these lines are moving so quickly. You can see right now it is on top of Fitchburg. They almost see two separate uh, cells going on here. You'll notice that there is one to the north and one to the south. Now, you're looking at Springfield right now. You can see the heavy rain there. Let me track those storms because they're actually almost in a different level. Uh, and you can see they're going to be heading to the Hampton area in 29 minutes. We've got them going to Palmer in 27 minutes. That cell right there or that area looks like it would pass south of Worcester. However, this area that you see up here towards the north, up from Nashua to Amherst, that's an area, Rutland in 12 minutes, Princeton in 8 minutes, Lemonster in 9 minutes. We've got it uh, 4 minutes into Derry. I think that's the one that's the strongest right now. You were mentioning straight line winds. Straight line winds much different from a tornado. Tornado, think of it as bringing things in and, and drawing it into it. This is as we're, we're looking at this thunderstorm coming at you, this line marching at you at 35 miles an hour. Then you get this gust that comes out of these thunderstorms, and that's why they can very rapidly approach severe levels. We can get them over 50, 60 miles per hour. Many times the damage created from straight line winds is confused for tornadoes because you see so much wind coming out of that very short period of time. Now, we've also had reports of hail. We had a report out in Montauk in Franklin County, inch and, di inch and a half diameter hail from these cells as they move through. So they do have a history of wind. They have a history of hail. I had a, uh, a gentleman call in from Gardner, said he saw some interesting looking clouds hanging low. Uh, we can't confirm or anything that it was any type of a wall cloud or any type of pre-tornado activity that was going on. Uh, we we're still sending our Skywarn spotters out that direction to keep an eye on it, but we are watching to see what's going on. You'll also notice all the lightning going on in Springfield right now. There's a tremendous amount with these storms this time of year. All that heat and humidity coming together, cold front coming in. Now, this is not the cold front. Behind it, it is still pretty muggy. The cold front is out to the west farther. But we're seeing most of the activity all forming up in the squall line that Harvey was talking about there. Now, let me just kind of take a look around here. Let's go up here and examine some of these cells a little up close and see what's happening there. We've got this area just off. Oh, that one around Merrimack right now is just really kind of popped up there. The one out west of Nashua, I'm not real concerned with right at the moment, although a lot of lightning with it, a lot of thunder and no doubt some gusty winds. That one in Townsend, which really Bike just about uh, 10 minutes ago with some intensity colors. Uh, it does seem like it has kind of lost some of it, but look at this one now just north of Fitchburg here. I'm going I'm to come really in close here, and we'll see if we can get some uh, differentiation. So right north of Fitchburg there, you see that? Uh, let me highlight this for you. I'm just going to come in here and circle that. See that little spot right there? That indicates to me that there is a lot going on there, whether it's hail or wind or whatever. It is not a classic uh, tornado signature where we look for a hook echo or anything like that, but it is a very, very strong cell. Now, I'm going to widen out the view again so I can kind of come back in and take a look at what's going on. Let's travel down this uh, this line because this line really is pretty impressive right now. Coming in here, yeah, there we go. That's the Princeton area I was talking about, the Gardner area there, uh, coming down to the south. And then let me put this in motion so you get an idea of the actual motion. It's moving east at 35. That's a very fast-moving storm for us, uh, and we've seen some indications of it going up close to 40 miles per hour. Now I'm going to turn this lapse off so I can come in again and take a look at what's happening there just south of, look at that area right there south of Fitchburg and Lemonster. Let's go in on at that and just take a look at that. And, and also I'm looking, oh, this is kind of an interesting echo that you're seeing here. See how it's kind of bowed a little bit there? That would indicate to me that out ahead of it, and I'll just highlight this area right in through here, right through here, we could get some very strong winds as this area kind of pushes its way through. Now, there's just a radar scan. Look at that. It has slid to the north a little bit this time. So even though the line is moving to the east, you're actually starting to see this little area now uh, going off towards the northeast. So we have it just south of Fitchburg right now. 
And if we come back in on that again, you can see this area here that I'm going to be watching. Uh, that's, that's the area where I'm seeing the strongest sells at right now. I'm just kind of looking down along that line a little bit, just checking to see if I've got anything else happening right there. But this does seem to be where most of our action is, right along that line. I've put the tracker up there so you can see uh, we've got about five minutes till it gets into Princeton there. Let me slide that out of the way so you can get an idea of where your town is right now. Lightning is going to be the big story with that. And look right around the Fitchburg area. That's where, get another scan coming through. I want to see what happens up at Nashua. That one's not terribly impressive right now, but this area right there, that's the one that I think has probably got your most wind with it right now. It also is the cell that's kind of familiar with that hail that we had going on earlier. And you're looking at live pictures from Springfield just off on the left-hand side of your screen. Let's take a look out at Springfield and see what's going on there with their thunderstorms. And boy, let me tell you, if you've ever been through severe weather like these people did, just a few days ago. Um, anytime you start to see the skies threatening, it's very, very traumatic. It's, uh, it's a very, uh, very um, a scary for a lot of people who have gone through just something that they've gone through. So even just lightning and thunder. And we are looking at some live pictures right there on our left hand side. You can see the rain showing up. Uh, where are we looking at? What is that? What is, that's Athol right now. So we've got Athol showing up on the screen right now with uh, looks like some very heavy rains going on there. Traffic seems to be moving along. By the way, be cautious about that because there's a lot of water that comes down very quickly with these storms. Uh, when that water comes down, it ponds up on the roadways and that of course is your very dangerous for driving. It's slick as ice sometimes out there. We talk about, you know, just skidding along on the, on the water many times this time of year, especially after it just starts to rain because there's a lot of oils and stuff into the road that are lifting up. So there's, the, oh, look at that cell right there by Fitchburg. Let's come right in on that. Those of you who know those streets up there, uh, just lost some of its intensity, which tells me that as it kind of, kind of collapses, it's just north of the airport there. As it kind of collapses there, you probably could have had some hail, which is dropping out. So it gives us a little bit less of a signature that we have happening there. And let's widen out the view and see what's going on there. Harvey, I'm going to turn it over to you for a second. I'm going to track a couple of these storms here and get some timelines on those. What have, you, what have you got going on there? The severe thunderstorm warning, I know. Yeah, absolutely. It has been extended now so that Boston is included in this severe thunderstorm warning, as you can see. And even areas to the south will probably wind up included when we get a little bit deeper in time. Once again, this is a very strong line of storms. It's a classic squall line, which means it has very strong winds right along the leading edge and a lot of vivid lightning with it as well. You can see it's a very strong representation on radar. And you know, the temperature has heated up to 90 in Boston. We didn't make the kind of temperatures we thought we were gonna make because we had that round of showers this morning and the clouds, so it was a slow launch for the temperature. But it's made it to 90, it's very humid, and that means these storms will indeed be holding together as they come through Boston. No sea breeze in Boston to weaken the storms. Wanna show it to you in three dimensions because we see the vertical nature of the storm and also you can see the lightning. Notice it's almost continuous uh, near the leading edge of this. You see the lightning showing up and showing up and showing up. That's one way we can represent it. We also have another way to represent the strokes of lightning. Look at that concentration from Nan Manchester, New Hampshire, north and east. Then we see more lined up in the line that's headed down and, and has been moving close to Springfield area, as you saw a lot of lightning in the live pictures that we were showing you from Springfield as well. And whenever we're talking about lightning, lightning safety is very, very important. You know, when thunder roars go indoors, that's what we say and definitely wait it out. Inside is a safer place to be. Lightning is obviously a hazard and a danger. So in a building is the best. If you can't get into a building and a car is better, it's not safe outdoors, that's for sure. And even you should wait like 30 minutes until you've heard the last thunder to then venture out and be sure that lightning is done with that particular storm or line of storms. Now, hail signature is showing up in places and you can see obviously it's been raining and there's been lightning and the storm's been going through Springfield. Also want to mention that our news folks have been in touch with Peter Judge of MEMA, MEMA, Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency. And as far as we know so far, no reports of funnel clouds or tornadoes. But yes, a report of a strong line of storms with vivid lightning and wind gusts in some places as high as 50 to 60 miles per hour, which has taken down a few limbs and a few trees here or there. That's what we're dealing with on the lead edge of the storm. Now you saw the hail signature, it pops up. Not only that, but we're seeing a little bit of rotation. But keep in mind, when we see that single signature, that usually means it's up around the base of the clouds, not really working its way on down. The type of situation that this is, is not the same as what happened eight days ago. This is a classic squall line for the most part. And that's where, as I mentioned, you get the strong winds right ahead. You know, the winds blow up before it ever actually starts to rain. You see the sky get dark and the future cast.
five children, so what are we going to do? We're going to along. So at six o'clock, I mean, places like Springfield,